When I was growing up in Santiago, one of my daily jobs after school when I was, oh, about 10 or so, was going to the bakery a block and a half away to buy bread for the late afternoon meal. The fresh bread came out of the oven several times a day, this little hole in the wall bakery. It smelled like warm yeast and it was nothing better than cradling a bag full of maraquetas, rolls that are crusty on the outside and perfectly soft on the inside. I was charged with buying half a dozen maraquetas and I would sometimes sneak an amazing warm bite or two on the way home. And I remember saving up one week to buy an extra maraqueta. Then I had to share it, a little bit of it, with the squirrels just as I got home so nobody would know. To this day in Santiago, getting fresh bread every day is essential. That huge grocery store, the Jumbo, can have rows and rows of sliced shiny bread and shiny packages. But a small mob appears when the real bread comes out of the ovens and is dumped into the bins. Bread is essential. It is daily. It is also tied to so very many memories. So let your own memories rise up. Really. You can stop the video for a moment while you do this. Cleopas and his companion invited Jesus to their evening table after they had walked a good ways with him from Jerusalem. Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to them. Bread, that essential daily tied to so many memories. And in that moment that Cleopas and his companion received a gift from God, and as we listen to their story, we might receive a gift as well. As Jesus took the bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them, their eyes were open and they recognized him. Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. Jesus was made known to them in something that was essential and daily, in something that evoked layer upon layer of memory, its very feel and taste. In these strange days, I wonder if we might come to a deeper appreciation of the daily and the essential again. When we can't just run out to the store and get bread when there is a chance that there might not be bread, or at least not bread as we like it, when we realize that others may be checking their coin purses to see if they have enough money to buy the bread they need for this day, for so many people all over the world, bread is both daily and essential. And bread binds us together in daily and essential ways. If we truly pray for our daily bread, if we begin to recognize again our reliance on each other, to have that essential daily food that nourishes our bodies, we can truly pray for our daily bread. And our hearts begin to know once more our reliance on God at a deeper level. God is the giver of all things, the giver of all good gifts, the one who sustains our life. Jesus was made known to Cleopas and his companion in the breaking of the bread, in the essential, the daily, the nourishing gift that 
binds us to each other and to God. Thanks be to God for something so simple and yet so deep. Jesus was made known to Cleopas and his companions in the breaking of the bread, in something that was essential and daily, and in something that evoked layer upon layer of memory, and in something that felt and tasted and smelled like the day. Jesus was made known to them in the memories that rose up in their hearts. Maybe it was the smell or the particular way that Jesus handled the breaking of the bread itself. Maybe it was the words or the way he used them to bless them. But don't you know that the memories flooded around the table? They had shared so many meals with Jesus at the end of the day, and in so many ways they had listened to his voice teaching, and so many times they had watched as Jesus laid his hands down in blessing on someone who was sick or grieving or in need of love. So many times that Jesus had stretched his hands out with food to share so much abundance. And here he was again at their table. Their eyes were open and they recognized Jesus. It was a gift from God. We do not have the direct experience of those first disciples to spur our memories, but we do have memories together. We have no lack of memories. We have the scripture memories. We have the testimony of generations and generations of faithful ones who have gone before, who have our own experiences in the community. As we have read and listened to and interpreted God's word together, as we have welcomed strangers and offered a deep hospitality to someone in need, as we have risked being ourselves in love, as we have come back again and again to the table where we are fed and strengthened to the bread and the cup. And when the bread is blessed and the cup broken among us, the memories flood the table and we can recognize Jesus still and receive the gift of God's presence. Of course, there was something about Cleopas and his companion that made their hearts ready to receive this gift. They'd been walking to Emmaus together with one another, really talking with each other. Not the weather or the crowd size in Jerusalem or any other polite possibilities, They had been talking about these things that had happened, all of these things that had to do with Jesus and God's work through them, how he was a prophet, mighty in word and deed before God and all people, how they had been hoping that he was the one that would redeem the people. And as Cleopas and his companion were deeply engaged in all of this, Jesus came near them. Jesus came near that space where their hearts were open and yearning and they were seeking. When we ponder the ways of God, when we open our hearts to hear the teaching of Scripture, when we train ourselves to remember what Jesus has done in the past and what God is promising to do in the future, we are making our hearts ready for the gift of Jesus' presence among us. It's not that we can keep God from 
coming by what we do or don't do. Jesus promised to be with us, but it's about whether we will recognize his presence among us. Cleus and his companion found their hearts burning when Jesus began to open scripture. I would venture to say that our hearts are more likely to burn over scripture if we spent a little more time with them, with the story of God, with the story of God's people, pondering and treasuring again and again in our hearts. Cleopas and his companion were deeply engaged they were open and ready, though they might not have realized it at the time. Their hearts were open, even in the midst of their grieving, even in the midst of all of the uncertainties around them. Even when they couldn't see what step might be coming next. And as they gathered around the table, with simple, daily, essential bread, they received a gift from God, and they recognized Jesus with them. They couldn't rest till they got back, till they got back to the eleven disciples and their companions that could give their testimony. And so I pray that. God might give us the grace and the courage to follow in that same way, that we may tell what has happened to us on the road and how Jesus has been made known to us in the breaking of the bread. Jesus, known to us in the breaking of the bread.